and welcome back AP Calc AP students to our final example three covering topic 8.4 finding the area between curves and as I promised I've got a really interesting uh, question that um, involves a couple of trigonometric functions and for some reason I've always thought that the resulting shape looked like a banana so that's why the bitmoji is there but I'll let you guys be the judge once you see the graph so what are we looking at here in our example well, it reads, find the area of one of the regions bounded by the graphs of f of x equal the sine of x and g of x equal the cosine of x. As always, sketch in, uh, the graph and shade the region. And so we're going to go ahead and start off using our color coding. I'm going to let f of x be the blue curve, as always. Notice that the uh, coordinate grid that I provided is nicely segmented into units of pi over 2 along the x-axis. So if you remember, your sine graph crosses through the origin, and it has a maximum of 1 at here at pi over 2, and then it reaches pi uh, on the x-axis before it reaches a min of negative 1 at 3 pi over 2, only to come back at 2 pi. And if we graph on the other side, we would have our minimum at negative pi over 2 and our 0 at negative pi. So if we do our best to connect the dots, knowing that this is going to have this oscillating sinusoidal look to it, this might be what you have for your sine curve. All right, we're going to do the same thing with our cosine. You know, another good thing about this example, it does review the graphs of sine and cosine, which sometimes can be forgotten. All right. Cosine starts at the point 0, 1, and then we have a 0 at pi over 2, a minimum at pi, a 0 at 3 pi over 2, and a maximum at 2 pi. If we go over to this other side, we're just going to cross the x-axis at negative pi over 2 and reach a minimum at negative 1. And so if you recall the graph of cosine, it actually looks a little something like this. I'm going to sketch the positive side of it first. And then I'll just pick up where I left off and sketch the negative side of it. And there we go. And as you can see, as you can see, this particular problem does indeed contain um, a pair, at least what we see of shaded regions um, at this stage. And so our job is to only find one of those shaded regions. And you know what? I feel awful that my graph looks pretty pretty rotten here because I wanted those two regions to be very similar looking. So if you'll give me a mulligan here, I'm going to re-graph. That looks a little bit better maybe. And this is what I'm going to try to convey. You've got a sketch. You've got a region right here where I've checked and another region over here. It makes absolutely no difference which one that you might want to find the area. You guys just take your pick. In fact, if you think that using the sides, uh, the part that has positive intersection points would be easier, I will go along with that. And maybe we let this be our region that we're finding the area of. But I want you to, re to, to keep in mind that those two regions would be the same size. Even the one that would come about over here on the right end of the graph would uh, eventually have the same area. So one of the things that's going to be very important in this problem is you are going to all have to find what these values are going to be. Where do these two graphs intersect each other? At least what is the y, uh, x value at those two locations, which is yet another reason why I really enjoy this problem, because um, the whole idea of when does sine of x equal cosine of x is a very important concept to know. I just think in mathematics in general. And there's there's really no tried and true analytical procedure to solve. You know, setting this equal to zero doesn't largely help. You just have to have knowledge of the unit circle or knowledge of your basic uh, triangle trigonometry ratios. Um, and and you'll you'll end up getting the answer correct. But my hope is that you understand that this can only exist in this 45, 45, 90 special triangle environment. It exists at a 45 degree angle. That's when uh, we have a value of pi over four for our x in radians. And so that is certainly going to be one of our answers. And that 
is obviously the one that occurs first here. Notice we've got another one that's between pi and 3 pi over 2. So in other words, there's another time when the sine and the cosine have the same sign. And by virtue of the unit circle and the acronym, all students take calculus, all students take calculus, we see that sine and cosine are going to be equivalent in quadrant one. They're both positive, in other words. And we also realize that in the case of quadrant three, sine and cosine are going to uh, have uh, the same sign as well. They're actually both going to be negative in that instance. And so we need to find the reference angle of pi over four that's over here in quadrant three. And as it turns out, that would be, what would that be? What would that be? If we go all the way around here, that would be pi and we go another pi over four. So I'm gonna say five pi over four is what we're gonna want. Okay, now just to give you a little variety, if you are a student at my school or if you somehow have access to the solution key that was prepared for this document, I actually set it up differently there. Just to give you a bit of a, 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 a variation, I found the intersection over here of negative 3 pi over 4. You can verify that on your own. And I actually integrated from negative 3 pi over 4 to positive pi over 4 to find that region. Same answer. You can compare the two if you're interested. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to continue with the values that I found. So lower boundary pi over 4, upper boundary 5 pi over 4, and now we have top minus bottom, which is a very interesting situation with the two video, uh, the video here that I've made and the solution key. In the video here that you're watching with the boundaries of pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4 in our yellow shaded region, the blue curve, sine of x, is on the top, and therefore I will start with him minus the cosine of x. But keep in mind, if you were using the boundaries over here with the starred position, the red graph is on top, so you would need cosine on top. And if you're thinking, what would happen? Just what would happen if you switched the f of x and the g of x? What do you think? Have you thought about it? Well, the answer is that your result would just have the opposite sign. It would be wrong, mind you, but it would only be wrong by the opposite sign, by a factor of negative one. So that's something to think about. All right, to finish this up, we're going to integrate. Be very careful when you integrate sine of x, your answer is going to be negative cosine of x. When we integrate cosine, we get positive sign, but there's already a negative in front of it. And all of this will be evaluated from 5 pi over 4 down to pi over 4. So we have to think about this. What is the negative cosine of 5 pi over 4 minus the sine of pi over 4? Something that we're going to have to calculate, and then we're going to subtract the quantity negative cosine of pi over 4 minus the sine of pi over 4. So you can see we just use the fundamental theorem to enter our boundaries. Now for the cosine of pi over 4, think about that a little bit. If you need to go over to this sketch, you certainly can. But we're talking about uh, the, the cosine value here in the third quadrant we know that's going to be negative. We also realize that it's going to also use the reference angle of pi over four. So if we can come up with just what is our basic sine or cosine to pi over four, we're gonna be in pretty good shape. Remember that pi over four is the same as 45 degrees. In a basic right triangle, the ratios might be one, one, and square root of two, which means that your cosine would be one over square root of two your sine would also be 1 over square root of 2. Now, if you would rather uh, manipulate that and, and write it with a common, I'm sorry, with a rationalized denominator, I'm going to attend 
to intend to agree with you, I think that might be a little bit easier. So we'll think of this as the square root of 2 over 2. And trust me, we're going to have a lot of those in this problem because it's going to start off immediately with one of them right here, negative. And don't forget, this was going to be negative square root of 2 over 2. Remember, we are in quadrant 3 where both sine and cosine are negative. So we have another minus and another negative square root of 2 over 2. There's a lot of negatives going on in this problem, isn't there? All right. After that, uh, we will close the parenthesis that aligns with this first one. I'm going to go ahead and distribute my two negatives here to get a positive. And then the cosine of pi over 4, well, that's back up here in quadrant 1 in the friendly confines where we have a positive value for both sine and cosine. Notice how the double negative will change to a plus, and hence we have this. And honestly, I, I think at this point, if if um, all goes well, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna do something. I think I'm gonna get rid of some parentheses because I knew I had something up. So let's talk about what I did here. I do not intend for this negative to distribute through. This negative right here is only going to affect him. And so I've made that effect happen. I should have closed the parenthesis right off there. So hopefully that didn't confuse anybody. Uh, it turns out that everything here is going to be positive. I'm going to have a positive square root of 2 over 2 four different times, right? I don't think you guys would necessarily need to write this, as you can see what's about to happen. But this is really where this is all headed. And if we were to add this all up, you would obviously have 4 square root of 2 all over 2. And by the time we reduce, 2 square root of 2 is indeed our final answer. And that is going to be the area between one of the shaded regions between the sine and the cosine curve. Hopefully this helps. We're going to turn our attention to topic 8.5 in our next video. And I just have really uh, two, a pair of examples, and the focus is going to be on what do you do when everything's is sort of uh, rotated by about 90 degrees and you have to do your setups with respect to why. If you like what you're seeing, be sure to subscribe, and as always, keep studying, and I'll see you at the next video.